Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually we will see the proof of uh, the invariance lemma which is a crucial uh, result uh, which will be used to prove the Engels theorem and the Lee's theorem and so on. Okay. So, this is a very important formalization. Okay. So, let us actually uh, state the invariance lemma. So, before stating that I need to actually fix some uh, uh, terminologies. Okay. So, we call, uh, so let us start with the Lee subalgebra, uh, sorry linear Lee subalgebra. So, let me denote it by capital A. So, let us say capital A is being uh, Lee, linear Lee subalgebra. Okay. So, why I want to actually restrict to this situation, uh, so I want to have the all the elements of capital A acting on this uh, capital V. So, we will see later uh, the notion uh, that I am going to define now called weights that can be defined even for uh, any representation of uh, any arbitrary Lie algebra, but anyway let us uh, do it in this special situation and then later we, we actually explain, I will explain how one can do it for the general representation. Okay. So, what is a weight? So, a weight so, this is the somewhat important notion that will actually pop up a uh, uh, lot in uh, representation theory. So, a weight for A is a linear map lambda from A to C such that this V lambda which I am going to define. So, it will be called weight space. So, those V in capital V such that A V, so A acting on V should be equal to lambda A V for all A in capital A. Okay. So, this should be a non-zero subspace of capital V. Okay. So, you call a functional, okay. so lambda being linear map from A to C, so then we can call lambda is in uh, is in this A star which, which is the homomorphisms from A to C and uh, so this is actually a weight if you define what is called this weight space. So, this weight space should be non-zero. Okay. So, this uh, V lambda, so this will be called weight space of course, corresponding to the weight uh, lambda. Okay. So, let us fix some notation as we said. Okay. So, this uh, uh, A star we use very often. So, this is actually all the homomorphism uh, from uh, capital A to C. So, that means, this is, a, this is all linear uh, homomorphisms, not uh, algebra homomorphisms. Okay. This is all set of all. C linear maps okay, from A to C. So, now in terms of that what is on weight? So, weight is an element of A star and then you can, so for any element of A star you can define this uh, weight space okay, which is uh, V lambda such that capital, you collect those V in V such that A V acts as lambda A V for all V. Okay. So, this should be non-zero. So, you can define V lambda for any lambda, but you call lambda weight, you call lambda weight if and only if this V lambda is non-zero. Okay. So, now let us actually uh, state the invariance lemma and then uh, I will try to motivate actually why one expects such a statement and then we will see the proof of that invariance lemma. Okay. So, here is the invariance lemma as the name suggests this is actually about some invariance of some subspace. So, let us see what it is. So, we work for complex number in particularly uh, 
so this is characteristic 0. So, you can also take any characteristic 0 field not a problem. Of course, if you assume algebraically closed field then we can talk about all these eigenvalues and so on. So, that is why we are working over complex numbers. So, you start with a Lie algebra which is a sub algebra of some GLV. Okay. So, let uh, G being linearly sub algebra. So, where V is finite dimensional. Okay. So, V is finite dimensional and take A being ideal inside uh, G. Okay. So, then let lambda be a weight of A. Okay. So, let lambda be a weight. So, now what we can uh, do? We can actually construct the corresponding weight space okay. and then ask. So, this is obviously A invariant. Okay. Now, the question is since A being like a special subalgebra of G, you can ask whether this V lambda is actually in indeed G invariant subspace or not. Okay. So, you take this V lambda which is those V in V such that A V equal to lambda A V for all A in A. So, we prove that this is indeed a G invariant subspace. of capital. So, this is uh, somewhat very very important observation. Okay. So, you may ask actually, so where uh, such a, uh, result is actually coming from or the observation is coming from. So, if you go back and then recall uh, some of the results that you have seen in the linear algebra. So, that is what uh, motivates us to actually state something like this. So, for example, let me state it in very general t. Okay. Suppose, if you have uh, two operators acting on uh, let us say V, assume that A B and B A they commutes okay. A, A B equal to B A. Okay. So, then what we can do? We can talk about uh, lambda eigenspace of A. Okay. You take V lambda. So, that to be lambda eigenspace of A. So, what is the definition of V lambda? V lambda is nothing but those vector in V such that when you apply A to that V you get uh, lambda A or just lambda okay? because there is only one operator lambda V. <coughs> so, then from the linear algebra you can see that because A and B they commute. So, you can prove <coughs> this if you have not done this exercise you should do one can prove that this V lambda is actually B invariant. So, what is the meaning of that if you start with the vector V inside V lambda then B V will be again uh, lambda uh, eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value lambda. Okay. So, it is actually a simple check may be let us do it now itself. You start with V inside V lambda then you want to compute what happens to B V. Okay. So, what you want to do you want to see when you act A on B V whether you get uh, <coughs> lambda B V or not. So, you just compute A B V and then see that this is nothing but B A V because A B B A they are equal. So, now A V is being lambda V if you substitute back you get B lambda V. So, then it will imply lambda into B V. So, you proved that A B V is equal to lambda B V that means B V is being again inside V lambda. So, this is somewhat very very important observation because if you think in terms of Lie algebra. So, this if you take the span of A B that is actually gives you the abelian Lie algebra. So, then this subspace span by A gives you ideal inside that. So, indeed when you construct this uh, weight space corresponding to this ideal. So, you are saying that that will be invariant under entire space. 
Okay, so that's what written hidden in this uh, exercise. So this is not very hard to actually generalize for any family of commuting operators. Okay, so that I maybe I will leave it as exercise. So what one can prove? Suppose you have a family of commuting operators, call it AI, I in I. Okay, let's say family of commuting operators from let us say endomosmophy okay, acting on the same space. So, now what you can do? You can talk about uh, like lambda eigenspace for some particular actually uh, particular operator. So, if you take for example, AI. So, you can talk about uh, lambda eigenspace of AI. So, let me call it V, A, v lambda. Okay. So, then one can prove that this V lambda is invariant under any other A j. So, this is something very important observation. So, this is just follows from what we have seen earlier. Okay. So, basically that is what uh, I have written again. Now, such a phenomena is actually holds uh, in our setting as well. Okay. You have G which is a subalgebra of GLV and then if you have ideal A inside G. Okay. So, then you can talk about uh, weight space for the weight of this uh, capital A. So, take lambda in A star and then take V lambda to be uh, those V in V such that uh, A V is nothing but lambda A V for all A in A. So, our claim is this V lambda is G invariant. Okay. If V lambda is 0 then nothing to prove. So, we only worry about the weight space for which V lambda will be non-zero. Okay. So, what we need to really prove? So, you start with uh, some vector V in V lambda and then some y in inside g. Okay. So, for V in uh, V lambda and y in g. So, if you compute this y v. So, we want to say that. So, we need to prove let us write it here. We need to prove that this y v is again in V lambda. So, equivalently, so if you apply A on this y v, so we should get exactly lambda A of y v okay, for all A in A. So, that is what we need to prove. But let us see like uh, why you indeed actually uh, get something like that. So, here is the trick. Okay. So, if you compute A y v, you can see that inside the Lie algebra A y is nothing but y a plus some error term. So, that, that, that is the commutator which is just A y. Okay. So, the bracket A y is equal to A y minus y a. So, in particularly if you rewrite a y. So, which can be written as y a plus a y. So, this is true inside you can think inside either endomorphism of V or inside the subalgebra associative subalgebra generated by capital, uh, capital G uh, sorry G and so on. But anyway this is true as an operators. So, in particularly if you compute this a y v. So, you get y of a v plus the bracket a y of v. Note that a is coming from capital A and then y is coming from capital uh, sorry G. So, that implies this a y is in capital A as a being ideal inside G. So, that means, so this is inside uh, capital A. So, then this equation can be rewritten a y v equal to so, A v is lambda A. So, lambda A y v 
plus lambda a y and then v. Okay. So, now uh, if you want to show okay, what we expected to show this a y v is same as lambda a y v for all a in a. So, we need to prove that this term which we are getting it from the, the error term. So, this part must be 0. Okay. So, you may ask like why such a term one can expect to be 0. If you think about it, this is actually commutator. Okay. What is bracket a y? So, so let, us, let, let us try to work backward. So, what I mean by that? So, what we need to prove? We need to prove that uh, this v lambda must be finite dimension, sorry, must be g invariant. So, this v lambda, suppose if it is g invariant, then what will happen? So, both this y will act on v lambda. So, this y will act on v lambda and already this a is acting on v lambda, okay, that is acting as scalars. So, if you put together, then what will happen to this commutator? The commutator will again act on this v lambda. Okay. But we know that trace of any commutator will be 0. So, if you restrict to v lambda, so that will be trace of a restricted to v lambda times y restricted to v lambda minus okay, a restricted to v lambda times y restricted to v lambda minus y restricted to v lambda times a restricted to v lambda. So, that implies the trace of this a y must be 0 when you restrict on this v lambda. Okay. But what will be the trace? So, this a y it is an element inside capital A okay, because it is an element in capital A, each element of capital A acts as scalar. Okay. So, each element A acts as lambda of A on entire space. So, that means if you compute the matrix of this A with respect to some basis, so that will be just a scalar matrix with the, with the diagonal entries lambda of A. Okay. So, it is clear that for any eject in capital A, if you compute uh, the matrix z, so this will look like something like this: lambda of z, lambda of z, zero elsewhere. So that means the trace of z restricted to v lambda. So that will be actually the dimension of v lambda times lambda of z. Okay. So now if you take z to be the bracket a y, then you can see that the trace of the bracket a y restricted to v lambda will be equal to dimension v lambda times lambda of a y. Okay. Since this trace is 0 as a y being the bracket a y being commutator, so you get the dimension of v lambda times lambda times a y is 0. So, now v lambda is being non zero space, the dimension is being non zero, so that would imply lambda a y is 0. Okay. So, that is why one can expect this uh, lambda a y being 0. So, if we prove that this is actually 0, so then indeed it proves that uh, uh, this v lambda is g invariant and we by working backward we could see that uh, this is being g invariant is also equivalent to saying that uh, this lambda of a y is being 0. Okay. So, it is actually somewhat inbuilt. So, and it is natural to expect from this uh, uh, from this work backward idea. Okay. So, let us see how one can actually prove such a result. So, what we need to prove? We need to prove that uh, for a in capital A and then y in g, if you compute lambda a y that should be 0. So, note that the bracket a y is inside capital A. Okay. So, indeed if you think about the argument uh, that we actually see in this work backward, all we needed is 
some y invariant subspace okay as long as we have the y invariant subspace and then a invariant subspace we will be able to actually calculate this trace of bracket a y which will be 0. So, in order to produce y invariant subspace, so there is a natural subspace called cyclic subspace okay. So, that is what we will take. So, what we do we take this u to be the span of this v y v y square v etcetera okay. Since u is actually inside your vector space v which is actually finite dimensional. So, that would imply that u is also finite dimensional. So, now what we can do we can choose small k. So, we can choose small k in z plus such that this v y v etcetera y power k v is actually linearly dependent. So, that would imply that y uh, sorry v y v etcetera y power k minus 1 v. So, that will be linearly independent. So, that means, so this is just a symbol simple exercise from linear algebra I will leave it to you. You can see that this set v y v etcetera y power k minus 1 v. So, that will form a basis for this capital U okay. So, note that where is this v is coming from. So, this v is already coming from uh, v lambda okay. So, we have chosen this v is from v lambda. So, then if you actually put together everything. So, this v is in v lambda. So, in particularly we have constructed u uh, sorry y invariant subspace. So, which is span of this v y v etcetera y power k minus l v that is inside your ambient space okay. So, this is clearly y invariant subspace. Okay. So, now we just check whether it is actually a invariant or not. If it is a invariant then from our earlier argument it is clear that the trace of bracket a y restricted on u will be 0. Using that we will be able to actually compute uh, the uh, compute the uh, lambda of bracket a y. So, that is the idea. So, let us see how this a acts on this u okay. So, let us compute how A acts on this capital U. So, now just actually look at A V. So, A V will be just lambda A V. So, by definition because V is coming from as V is coming from V lambda. So, now if you take A Y V. So, then what happens A Y V if you recall the formula. So, this is just uh, Actually, indeed, uh, we can actually uh, check uh, for any any element of capital A, not necessarily for just A. So, so for that, let's take how capital A itself acts. Okay. So then, I want to compute uh, some ejecting capital A, how it acts on U. So, if you just uh, look at it, eject V will be just a lambda V. lambda z v because v is coming from v lambda. So, if you compute z y v, so using the earlier formula you can see that this is y z v plus okay, uh, that bracket y z. So, if you just write it again, so this is bracket sorry z y on v. So, that means this is lambda e z y v plus lambda of e z y v. So, what is important if you compute y v. So, this is actually inside lambda e z y v plus 
lambda is at yv. So, this is inside the span of v comma yv. Okay. So, let us see whether this is accident or this is what happens for higher powers. Okay. So, let us compute how it acts on y square v. Okay. If you compute what happens to the y square v, so we can use what already how it acts on the y v. Okay. So, this is going to be again y v uh, z y plus bracket z y and then acting on y v. So, that means z y square v is nothing but z y square v plus z y y v ok sorry what I have written. So, this is supposed to be y z sorry. So, z y square v so I am writing it as z y acting on y v. So, this would be y z plus z y acting on y v. So, that means z y square v is nothing but y z y v plus the bracket z y y v. So, then just to you unravel you already know how z y v acts. So, z acts on y v as y into lambda may be z y v plus lambda z y v plus z y y v. Okay. So, now you can see that, so this is nothing but lambda z y square v plus lambda z y y v plus z y acting on y v. So, now since this z y is again element of capital A. So, for any element of capital A we have this formula again. Okay. So, this is going to be on y v will be some span of v comma y v. Okay. So, whatever it is it does not matter. So, this is going to be inside span of v comma y v and here you can see that z y square v is nothing but lambda z y square v plus all the terms that are coming from lower span of lower terms v y v. Okay. So, basically this is all matters for us. So, z y square v is nothing but lambda z y square v plus okay, some term that some term is coming from span of v comma y v. Okay. So, because we are interested only in the computation of trace. So, that is why we are looking at what happens to the diagonal entries. Okay. So, now I will leave it to you to check. So, this is not very hard. The same computation actually tells you that if you compute e z y power r w. So, then you can uh, claim that. So, this is actually equal to lambda of e z y power or w plus some term u where this u will come from span of v y v etcetera y power r minus 1 v. Okay. So, in particularly if you look at the basis. Okay. So, what we have seen? So, this is uh, sorry this is y v So, basically what happens? So, if you take this basis v y v y square v and so on. So, y power so let us uh, what is the power we have actually fixed this is k. So, y power k <coughs> minus 1 v. So, under this e z where it goes you can see that. So, this goes to v goes to lambda z v 
and then yv goes to lambda ej yv plus something coming from span of v. Okay. Similarly, for the rth power it goes to lambda ej y power rv plus some term that term comes from span of v etcetera y power r minus 1 v. So, similarly for this lambda of z y power k minus 1 plus some u where u is coming from span of v etcetera y power k minus 2 v. So, that means if you just write down the matrix of z with respect to the basis Okay, this is the basis that we are taking. So, the basis to be v etcetera y power k minus 1 v. So, then you can see that this matrix looks like lambda ej, lambda ej and so on, lambda ej, here some stars whatever it is does not matter and then 0. Okay, this is just a upper triangular matrix with the diagonal entries being lambda of z. Okay, so, that means, so what is the trace? The trace of this z on this uh, acting on this uh, capital U. So, that is nothing but the dimension of U times uh, lambda of z. Okay. So, there are few observations. First observation is, uh, so this yeah, first observation is z is actually leaving U to U. Okay, so, that is the first observation. The second observation is the trace if you compute, so that is exactly comes as expected value dimension u times lambda of z. So, this equation tells us that uh, z is acting on capital U okay, because this element is also in capital U and then this element is also in capital U. So, from the explicit computation we see that z actually leaves u invariant and the trace is nothing but dimension u times lambda of z. In particularly the element that we have chosen capital uh, sorry a from capital A and then y from g you can see that this u is actually invariant under both a and y. So, u is invariant under both a and y. So, that means, if you compute the trace of this a y which is an element inside capital A, you get with respect to the basis B, you get dimension u times uh, this lambda bracket a y. So, which is 0 because both a and y leaves u invariant. So, this is commutator. So, that will imply lambda of bracket a y is 0. Okay. So, that completes the proof. So, basically what we did if you recall, so if you uh, go back to the proof, so basically what we did, we started with some elements A and uh, A from capital A and then uh, Y from G and then we fix a vector V in V lambda. So, what we wanted to uh, do, first we wanted to compute some Y invariant uh, subspace generated by V. So, that is why we, uh, we just looked at this cyclic subspace generated by this vector v under this map y. So, that is the span of v, y, v, y square v etcetera. So, then it is a simple fact from linear algebra there exists a small k such that this v, y, v etcetera y power k v is linearly independent, but this v, y, v etcetera y power k minus 1 v is linearly independent. So, this is dependent, this is independent. So, that means this big makes a basis. So, now you compute for any z in A how the action of that z on this subspace. So, you compute it on v, y, v etcetera and then you see that if you act it on y power r v, z actually gives you lambda z y r v plus some element that is coming from the lower degree term in some sense. It is coming from the span of v, y, v etcetera y power r minus 1 v. So, that way we are able to compute the trace and then we could see that uh, this trace is 0 okay? because for both A and Y, this both A and Y leaves this capital U invariant. So, that makes this trace actually 0. 
Okay, so this completes the proof of invariance lemma. So in the next lecture, we will see some applications of this invariance lemma. In particularly, we will prove uh, the Engels theorem and Lee's theorem. We will stop here. Thanks.